I'd like to talk to you today about waste and it's one of the things that you can waste in a couple of ways but to this this little tute is about um, how you can waste product just pure waste of product so this is not a beauty one this is a hair one so this is for the guys who who think oh my god I'm, I'm forever paying the product cost of my tint so there's a little um, form that you can download and it's just a way to measure just for a day or so and just be really honest about who's mixing what and why. And what I know for sure is that everybody across the team will, will mix a different amount. So some guys will be mixing 40 grams and perhaps 60 mils of peroxide. Uh, others will be mixing 30 and they'll go, oh, no, 30 is plenty. And others go, oh no, I at least need 45. So what I want you to think about is to set it at a standard amount. So a tint regrowth should be a standard amount and anything more than that should be more than that. And that's just how it is. But before you say, okay, everybody's using 30 grams and that's it, or everybody's using 40 grams and that's it, you need to do um, a little bit of explaining to the guys as to why you would do this. Now, the first thing is um, you explain that it does waste the money and the money would be better off spent on um, training, education, a Christmas party function or anything, I think, would be better than wasting. But what I, don't, what I know for sure is there's two ways to waste product. One is that you mix up 40 grams and 60 mils or whatever your ratio is. It might be one plus one, so 40 grams and 40 mils. doesn't matter. They're all good product companies. They don't get to where they are unless they are. So it's not that I love one or don't like another. But what I want you to do is think about the two ways that you can waste it. So you can mix up 40 grams, not use it all and leave it in the bowl. And that's probably the most easiest way to track waste. You can go... Oh my God, look at this, look at this leftover waste. But that's not the only way that you can waste. So what you could do is you could have a bowl and you could start putting the waste in there and, and weigh it at the end of the week. What I'd like you to do is make a um, decision that you will change everybody's notes at the end of each mixing. So when you think about it, if every one of your clients has been in between four and six weeks, you fixed it. If it takes six to eight weeks before your clients come in, you fixed it. And it really isn't that big a problem to fix. And what I know for sure is it will shave considerable cost off your bottom line, and that's really important. So you could show this to the team and say, okay, this is what Lisa thinks about product waste. More than happy for your, for your team members to have their hair done at, at no cost at all. Sometimes we can even charge them perhaps 90% off, which means that they just pay for the product costs. And all of those are arguably so. Depends on your team, depends how many on your team, and there's, that's a whole lesson in itself. But at the moment, I want to just talk about why it's important not to waste and what are the rewards if you don't waste. So the first thing is, I'm happy for you to have your hair done at no cost, but don't waste my tint. Okay, so in return for them having their hair done, they don't waste your tint. And I think that's a fair swap. The other way that you can waste tint is you mix 40 grams, which you didn't really need to mix. You probably could have mixed 30. You mix 40 grams and you put 40 grams on the head. And that's another way of wasting. So when you look in the bowl, you think, well, the bowl's empty, so I mustn't have wasted any. No, that's not the case. What happens is, and I say, say this is the hair shaft and you part it like that. And this is where the hair, you would paint here and you'd paint here, okay? So what people, some people do is they put that much on their paintbrush that this trough is not painted here and here, it's painted so it's full. And the trough in the, in the parting is full. And the next one is full. And the problem with that is it's not in the bowl, so of course it's not wasted, but you're over compensating. You don't need to do that. Maybe way back when I was a hairdresser, you did because tints weren't, um, didn't have the covering um, qualities that they do now. And they're a little bit more thicker and solid and they were hard to push through. But today they're not. They're beautiful. They glide on beautifully. So I can hear some of you saying, oh, what about if they don't cover the grey areas? Yep, absolutely. I don't want you to ever have to do a retint because you were skimping. That's not what I want. But I want you to consider that it's not always hard to cover all over. It may be just a few resistant areas and it might be like under here or it might be only here or it could be just here. Generally, it's not everywhere. Okay, And if someone is that resistant and that hard to cover, I'd like you to consider that maybe a solid colour isn't the right 
color for that person. It's kind of like fighting up an uphill battle. So maybe there could be something else that would be better for that person who's constantly struggling against her greys and they're resistant. And I think, well, why do you just have to keep doing that? Think about what else. Okay. The other thing you can do is always pre-soften with perhaps a, a tin bowl or something. So I struggle here in the front, it just doesn't cover. All right. And I know what I'm doing. Uh, I do it myself. I put it on for 40 minutes. It just doesn't cover. It's just wicked. So what I do is I just pre-soften it with a little bit of peroxide only. And then I go away and I come back in 10 minutes and I put the color on and it covers. So, you know, there's many ways that you can um, make your color um, spread further. And it fascinates me that people think I'm such a genius for teaching them this. And product companies aren't keen that I do this, but I think, you know what, I'm going to raise your um, retail sales like you've never believed would be possible. But what I'm going to do is stop the customers wasting tint everywhere I go. Okay. And it's really sad. The other day I was meeting with a, a product company who wanted me to work for them in the next year. And I was really excited and we we're talking about maybe what I could present on. And one of the topics I present on is product is waste. And he just said, flat out, nope, we won't be doing that. And I thought, wow, isn't that terrible? That a big, well-known company like you wouldn't want your clients to know that mixing 50 grams is just a waste. And I thought, mm, okay. And that's probably why I don't like working with every company. And now that's only, it's not the company, remember, it's the rep. It's the one person. And that's what I mean, that people that are that narrow-minded and think, okay, this is silly. And, and often they're quite uncomfortable with business coaches because we look at numbers, we really do. But I want growth. I don't want to be like an accountant who cuts things back, but I don't want you to waste tint. It's just silly. Think about, do a little maths on it and you think, wow, if we did, you know, 45 colors a week, or even if you're a smaller salon, you're only doing 50 colors, 15 colors a week, take 10 grams off those 15, add it up and think, what would I save in a year? Thousands, absolutely thousands. And I would much prefer that it belong to you and the product company. That's what I do. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that you will go away, download the sheet, and all you have to do is put your name in, what you mixed, and who, what was it for. So did you mix so many grams for a toner? Did you mix so many grams for a half head of foils? Did you mix so many grams for a semi-permanent? Or did you mix so many grams for a tint? And just have a look in a week's time when you've gathered some data and you'll be fascinated with how different everybody is across the board. So hopefully that was really helpful. Thanks guys.